Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the science of behavior analyst, but it's actually the science in general. <laughs> we're going to talk about this can be utilized in all types of sciences, but we're all related to ABA as much as I can because that's why you're taking this course. If you take a research methods course in psychology, economics, or the medical field, they utilize this as well. These are the three levels of science. So in ABA, we're a scientific discipline. Our, all our principles are based on observable behavior and have been put through multiple research studies to show that they are effective. Science can help predict and control behavior using evidence-based principles. We have three levels of understanding description, prediction, and control. And we'll talk about those three levels. The first is description. This is the most basic level of scientific understanding, observing and describing events without any cause or effect relationship. It's the foundational kind of step to determine if we should study this more. So observing that, just observing how much problem behavior there is in a school and there's a lot, so maybe we need to move to set level two and kind of determine the cause of that behavior. Anytime you're just observing, this would be description. This is often off of qualitative research. So we have two types of research, quantitative and qualitative. T quantitative is typically looking at numbers to find relationships, and you're using numbers to find the cause and effect, while qualitative they're using, essentially, I think of it as words to find the cause and effects. Qualitative takes a lot longer than quantitative, but I know someone who got a PhD with me for a year, she went into the homes of Latino students who had IEPs and interviewed, observed. She went to IEP meetings and just observed so much. She had the amount of paperwork from this. From all her observations and her interviews, what she did is she started looking at if there's themes within that. So are there like the theme of distrusting or trusting the education system? Every time that theme came up, she would like mark it within her observations, her interviews. And then, she, you know, she part of her dissertation was a whole chapter on that. And she described where she found that in each in all this work, this year long of work. So that's what qualitative is. It gives us a really rich understanding of something. It often will determine what the quantitative researcher will do. I would read that and see, okay, Latino families kind of distrust schools. You know, it was done. I was living in California at the time. So distrust schools in California. So what could we do with that? I could now put out surveys to thousands of families to learn more and quantify it with numbers and then find relationships in those surveys. And so often we often need qual to do the quant because it tells us where to go broad with our research. She had five families, so it was only those five families experience, but by looking at those similarities, it does help us have a better understanding of that. And it also helps us determine where research should go from there, or even policy sometimes, or how we practice. So the next level is prediction. This is where you'll do one observation and then another observation and see if they are similar, if they correlate. The big thing here is correlation does not mean causation. <laughs> and you'll hear that over and over again if you start getting into research and take more research classes. A lot of times we're using a Pearson's correlation. So I observe, you know, how many students have A's in the school, and then how much training the teachers receive all year round. And I do that over five schools. And I see if teachers get more training, do the students academically perform better? But there's other things that could make it look like they relate when they don't. For example, if the parents of the school are super supportive, maybe they give extra money for teacher training or the principal's just a great principal who's really helping both teachers and students. That could cause that. It's not the teacher extra teacher training that's causing the better grades. Or it could be, Ely. You don't know. You don't know if it's a correlation or a causation. These are the 
most kind of humorous ones when newspapers grab a correlation and they're like, oh, and they say, oh, there's causation when there's no. And the funniest one I've ever heard, and I use it in all my classes, is Australia. Some researcher looked at shark attacks versus ice cream sales, and they said when ice cream sales go up, shark attacks go up. And they weren't saying there's causation. They were just commenting. The newspaper took that and went with it. It became this weird thing about, oh, maybe, you know, eating ice cream, people might gain weight. Then the sharks are more interested in them as a food. So it's, it just went to a weird place. There's no causation there. There is a correlation. The correlation involves the weather. If it's hot, someone's more likely to buy it ice cream because it's more enjoyable when it's hot they're more likely to go into a pool into the ocean and when sharks are there's more people around for the sh you know sharks and the people come in close contact if more people are in the ocean and so the you know shark attacks are going to go up if it's snowing outside and no one's getting in the ocean you're going to have probably zero shark attacks not that it snows in australia but it does get cold so that's one example. You can find them. If you go to the research section of a newspaper, if they have one, the bigger ones do, like the LA Times, New York Times, you can find so many of those. I actually had an activity where I had students go find one. <laughs> they had to find somewhere that whatever was a news article, magazine article, some sort of publication that was not research because typically researchers we know this we try really hard not to do this we say even though we found a correlation it doesn't mean causation but i had them find a publication that was saying there was causation when there's only a correlation and so the last thing we find is control and this is the highest level and it's when we actually found the relationship and why we found the relationship is because we manipulated variables through experimentation. For example, I'll increase the amount of treats I give my dog when they sit calmly on their bed. I'm manipulating the environment by giving them extra treats every time they sit calmly on their bed. And then them sitting calmly on their bed increases. So we know that that's a control because I'm changing something about the environment to get some sort of behavioral change. And then you can see this is in medicine when we're giving somebody medication and tracking their symptoms. We're changing the environment so we can say that is control. If you're changing something, not just observing two things, you're moving to a control level, which is our highest level. A description is we just observe and describe qualitative falls in that a lot of times we'll do that to start to figure out what we're going to do next as researchers recording how often a child engages in self-stimulatory behavior so we might know at that point we need to move into an intervention for self-stimulatory behavior but we don't know anything about it except how often it is occurring and then prediction, which is a correlation, we're going to observe two things and see if they change at the same time. So either maybe one changes, one goes down, or maybe they both go up, or maybe they both go down. So noting that tantrums increase when sleep decreases. I'm going to measure how much a child sleeps every night, and then I'm going to measure how many tantrums they have every day. We can't say there's a cause, but we can say there's a correlation, and then maybe we can play with some sleep interventions to see if we can increase sleep and decrease tantrums. Once we start playing with some sleep interventions, which we don't have great sleep interventions because it's a hard behavior to work with, but there are some things like making sure you have a solid nighttime routine and things like that. So we could also, I know a lot of parents are doing this now, but the melatonin gummies, we could try melatonin gummies, but then we're manipulating, we're changing the environment. We're not just observing. So we would move into control, demonstrating a cause and effect relationship through experimentation, using reinforcement to reduce tantrums and increase communication would be that level of control. Why does this matter? It's good because understanding what you're doing will help you collect accurate data. It helps you understand where we're in the process because our epi is kind of follow this process to up to intervention, which could be looked at as control. And it also makes sure we have evidence-based practices.
And so these are our key take takeaways so you can fully understand the three levels of science. If you take a research methods class in a different field, they'll also utilize these three levels of science to teach you. Thank you.